Hello, my friends. This is Prakas. I'm a co-founder and CEO at Simulate Anything. Today, we're going to talk about simulating a phased array. But first, a disclaimer and plug. Simulation or mathematical models are only as good as the details we put into the model and simplifications we make, as uh, many of you know. The good news is, though, the technology has gotten much better over the years, and now simulation is used to speed up product development in many engineering domains. And if you want to use simulation in the cloud without needing to install software on your computer, we have just the right platform for you, and it's in beta currently, uh, but I have a link below if you want to sign up. Okay, back to the topic. In this video, we'll show some results using a software package called Phoenix. Phoenix uh, is open source, uh, developed in the public domain. It has been validated in a wide array of use cases. And it was developed by a community with support from the best universities and government labs around the world. So back to phase arrays. Phase arrays are an interesting technology with many different applications. Everything from ultrasonic scans of your body to cell phone signal re reception, Wi-Fi, radar, and even finding planets or steering spacecraft. So one uh, interesting use case that we all use every day is uh, cell phones, for example. Uh, if you have a phone and your phone has to contact the cell phone tower, as you all might know, uh, but the cell phone tower is very far away, and as you're driving or walking around, the, the direction of the tower could change. But if you're radiating uh, the signal to all different directions, then you'll be wasting a lot of your battery power. So you want to like form a beam towards your cell phone power and so that you can conserve a lot of battery and perhaps also reduce interference with other users. So many users can use the same frequencies because they're radiating in different directions. So phased arrays uh, technology is sometimes also called beam forming because you are forming a directed beam from waves radiating it, aiding out uniformly in all directions. Uh, so how does that work? If you have a point source or say a speaker, uh, let's talk about sound because, you know, that's kind of easy to think about. Uh, it will radiate out in a fairly wide cone in front of the speaker or antenna, or it may be even omnidirectional where it will radiate out in all directions. However, if you erase the number of speakers in an array where you put the speakers in a different pattern, like a linear array or a circular array, the waves can reinforce or destructively interfere based on how, ch how you change the phase of the signals between the array elements, and you can actually create a beam or steer the direction at which uh, you radiate or even filter signals coming to your uh, place. So this is used, for example, filtering is used, for example, in uh, voice recognition in speakers or maybe filtering out a noise when you're talking on the phone. The advantage of trying out different phased arrays designs in simulation is that you can try this out without building anything. And if you're talking about sound, for example, then you can't really see sound. So you'll need to put sensors. Uh, let's say you want to build a speaker that will kind of focus the sound towards a certain part of the room. Um, then to actually design this experimentally, You'll need a lab with an empty room and you'll need to place sensors around it. Um, and some people have actually done that. These, uh, you know, students from Cornell, uh, very great, great video and website, I'll link below. It's exciting to build it um, and it's a great project, but it will take some time, uh, maybe, you know, at least weeks, if not months and some budget. And if you build it wrong, then uh, you know you have to like kind of try it again. But what if you could visualize the features of how this phased array will behave before you actually build it? And that's what you can do in simulation and it would save you a lot of time and money. I'll spare the details that this can be a complex topic and I have a blog write up which also doesn't have too much details, but it has links to the details and the code is also there and please feel free to contact us if you have questions and we can answer the details uh, around it. 
But over here, I'll just show you some results. Here we are simulating an array with 8, 16, 32, and 64 speaker elements. And we'll see how it will uh, perform. Uh, and we can do that in simulation. So let's first start with uh, this eight um, element array. Let's say we just have eight speakers sitting next to the wall. Um, and uh, we are using a non-reflecting wall here. So uh, the walls absorb the energy. So it's only radiating really in one direction. So you can see that, uh, you know, although it's staring a little bit as you change the angle at which uh, you're sending the signal, there's still a fair amount of leakage. Uh, so let's uh, increase the number of sensors to 16 or number of speakers, excuse me, to uh, 16. And you'll see that it's now forming a much better beam. And then uh, going to, uh, in a minute, we'll go to 32. So, so you'll see it's getting even better. And now if you have 64, then you can almost see the length of the speaker there uh, with this array and what's called the near field. So near the speakers, the signals uh, do not have time to interfere in a certain pattern. And um, the, as you steer it, you'll see what kind of distortion in the field you're creating and how much of a difference in volume between the, uh, like the place where you're not sending the signals as well as the place where you're sending the signals. What's the difference between them? You can see. Um, and uh, let's say, you know, speakers, they behave differently when there's a wall nearby, because if you don't have a, like a perfectly absorbing wall, then it might reflect the sound back and the interference pattern might change. So let's change the top wall to be reflecting. And now you see that uh, it's like, uh, a different pattern where the distortions are happening much more towards the edges. So as you can see, uh, simulation can be used to kind of um, predict uh, your design before you actually make it. And uh, if you, uh, for example, let's say you put the speaker at a different place, you can change the shape of the room or you can maybe uh, add different furniture that would be reflecting or absorbing the sound. And you can even do this in 3D, but we just wanted to do it in 2D to start with. We'll do another video for 3D. Um, and, um, you know, if you put it near the center of the room, here's another simulation. And if you have speakers that can radiate out in many directions as you have these days, then what it'll sound like. So I hope you find this video interesting and uh, please feel free to uh, comment and ask us any questions that you might have. Thank you.